Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to this lecture on pitfalls in imaging the bladder, sources of error, and misdiagnosis. Now, bladder cancer is indeed very important. There are over 72,000 new cases of bladder cancer and 15,000 deaths in the U.S. in 2013. Most of these are transitional cell carcinoma, while others are squamous cell and adenoCA. Now, when you think about it, we do lots of CT for bladder cancer. Article by Sado a couple years back, CT urography is an accurate, non-invasive test for detecting bladder cancer in patients at risk for the disease. The high negative predictive value of CT urography in patients with hematuria may obviate cystoscopy in select patients. When you look at that article, they had very good results. You can see the positive predictive value, negative predictive value were indeed very strong. The negative predictive value of CT urography was higher in patients evaluated for hematuria alone, 98%. Indeed, very impressive. So we know that we need to uh, do CT for being able to evaluate patients with hematuria. And we do that with hematuria. We look at the kidneys, we look at the bladder. But I'm not going to speak about those cases where we're looking at a patient with hematuria. I'm going to ask you the question, how often is bladder cancer an incidental finding? We speak about a lot of incidental findings. We think about thyroid nodules. We speak about lung nodules. We speak about cysts in the pancreas. We think about aortic aneurysms and on and on. But I'm going to ask you, how often is bladder cancer an incidental finding? How many times have you diagnosed it? How many times have you missed it? What's your legal liability of missing an early bladder cancer in an asymptomatic patient? And what do you look for on CT for the routine evaluation of the bladder on a contrast study? What should you be looking for on every single patient? Well, let me tell you what made me think about this. I was asked to look at a legal case, and here's the legal case. The patient presents to the hospital, a 70-year-old woman, severe abdominal pain. Radiologist looks at these images and says the patient has ischemic colitis. It's a non-contrast CT. There's oral but no IV, and the radiologist is indeed correct. You can see the thickened left colon. This patient underwent immediate surgery. The patient did fine. Well, what the radiologist didn't notice was that look at the right side of the bladder wall. There's a soft tissue mass in the bladder, which was a carcinoma. Now, obviously, the radiologist was looking why the patient was having an acute abdomen, but three years later or so, there's the mass. And now the patient has metastatic disease. And they sued the radiologist successfully for missing a bladder cancer. Now, I was curious, is bladder cancer something that's a legal issue? So I did a, did a Google search for missed bladder cancer, and guess what shows up? A number of law firms. I don't know these law firms. I wish them well. Failure to diagnose bladder cancer, free case evaluation, or Harry S. Cohn and Associates, quick case review, delayed diagnosis of bladder cancer, parentheses, death. And they have some sample cases there. So bladder cancer is something we can see and we can easily miss. Now, the reason we can see them is bladder cancers are, when they're small particularly, can be seen in arterial phase imaging because they're slightly vascular. Now, if you use a protocol where the bladder is not distended, you're in good shape because you're not going to see these lesions. And although I showed you a big bladder mass that was missed, most of the tiny bladder cancers will be missed if you don't give IV contrast. But if you give IV contrast and you do like us a thousand cc's of water before the study and we don't let the patient go to the bathroom, or we try not to let the patient go to the bathroom, you're going to have a distended bladder and with a distended bladder there's all sorts of issues. You can see small tumors. And I will tell you that any enhancement of the bladder wall or off the bladder wall should be investigated further and assumed to be a carcinoma to be proven otherwise. Do not assume a subtle zone of enhancement of the bladder is of no clinical significance. And if you're uncertain on the axials, look at the coronals and sagittals. Now, this is an incidental bladder cancer on a patient who is being seen for a vascular study, but this is not very subtle. Tumor from 12 o'clock to about 5 o'clock, bulky lesion, or even this case, the bladder's not distended, but there looks like some amorphous calcification. There's dystrophic calcification seen on the axial and coronal images. Not a very difficult diagnosis. But what about this case? This was a vascular study. Do you see anything in the bladder? Well, look posteriorly. Very subtle enhancement. 
Sometimes it's hard to separate that out from the prostate. But in the sagittal view, there it is again, clear as night. That was a small bladder cancer, five millimeters. Small areas of enhancement, cystoscopy is mandatory. It's bladder cancer until proven otherwise. No if and buts or maybe. Or this example, same thing on the right side. Look at that lesion, five millimeters. Again, coronally, there it is. Very nicely seen. Small bladder cancer. Now in this case, if you got delayed images, you would see the lesion or you might think it's a clot. Sometimes it's easier to see with contrast in the bladder, but many times it's best seen and only seen on the enhancement without any positive contrast in the bladder. Another example, posterior bladder wall. Here you say, well, perhaps this is prostate, it's pushing in. I think it's partial averaging. But when you think that, go to the sagittal view and you recognize that it's not partial averaging at all. Now it's interesting in this case, I think it's a very obvious cancer, but with positive contrast in the bladder, it's much more subtle. Another example, again, I don't know why I see them more on the right side than the left, and they're usually posterior, but there is a lesion posterior near right UV junction, about a centimeter in change, enhancing. Again, there's the coronal view, very nicely showing you the lesion. And of course, in this case, with delayed phase imaging, you saw the lesion well also. Again, just to show you a few examples, there are in fact two lesions in this case, one at nine o'clock and one at 12 o'clock. And yes, you see bladder wall thickening and perhaps you're saying, well, this is simply due to uh, bladder hypertrophy, maybe bladder outlet obstruction, maybe cystitis. Those things at nine and 12 o'clock are concerning and when you look at them in coronal view, there's no doubt that's a bladder cancel to prove it otherwise. You can see we don't talk about marked enhancement. If you measure the enhancement, it's about 90 to 100 Hounsfield units. So they do enhance. And in this case, it's very easy to see that bladder lesion at 12 o'clock with enhancement. And on this image, uh, you can see as it washes out. And here it is in the sagittal. So you can see you need to look at things very carefully. We've published a bit on this. Shiva Raman wrote a very nice article last year. The presence of a discrete bladder mass or nodule should be considered suspicious for malignancy. In many cases, such lesions may be better appreciated on early phase imaging when surrounded by low attenuation urine, particularly when the lesion is avidly enhancing. Although a discrete filling defect may not be difficult to appreciate on delayed images when the nodule is large. So it's this vascularity that's of most interest to me. In other words, though, TCCs have typically been regarded as a hypovascular tumor, these lesions have considerable urethial hypervascularity, up to about 90 or 100 Hounsfield units, and are typically most conspicuous in early phase imaging. As a result, any focal hyperenhancement of the bladder urethelium must be considered suspicious for malignancy. Yes, you can see bladder wall enhancement, perhaps with cystitis, but usually it's more diffuse. But nevertheless, you better do a cystoscopy. Evaluation of the bladder has been largely within the domain of cystoscopy, and the bladder regularly goes ignored on CT by the radiologist. However, several imaging findings should suggest the presence of malignancy where the CT is performed as CT urography for hematuria or routinely in the emergency setting. You need to look very carefully. Another example here, diffuse bladder wall thickening, but there's a pedunculated lesion maybe with faint calcification at three o'clock, as shown in the coronal views. I show this case because you can see the lesion well, but look at the delayed phase. Actually, it's very easy to miss that left-sided bladder mass at nine o'clock. You're just assuming the bladder is not well filled. And here's a few later images. So indeed, it's a challenge. I think the point is that bladder cancers indeed can be very subtle. Since we are scanning patients faster and faster, and since we're these days doing lots of CTs with water as a contrast agent and with IV contrast, we're going to see the bladder on many patients in the abdomen. We need to look carefully and make sure there's not an incidental bladder cancer. Early bladder cancers are resected successfully. If missed, the patients will present later on, often with metastatic disease. So concluding then, 
bladder cancer can be an incidental finding and when you think about incidental findings you better be thinking about bladder cancer it may only or best be seen on arterial phase imaging any enhancement of the bladder wall should be investigated further do not make any assumptions do not assume a subtle enhancement is of no significance and as i mentioned coronal and sagittal views may be very helpful and with that i'll stop there and thank you for your attention